start with the bar. There's nothing wrong with that. People think, oh my gosh, people are going to laugh at me. Let them laugh. If their lives are that sad, that all they've got to do is laugh at a new person squatting the bar. Time of the ball, A-hole here. Thank you for joining me as always. And for the new people that ask, this is Gerald the Fitness Penguin. This is Oberon the Octopus. And this is Stanley the Gange Giraffe. They are cuddly toy fitness mascots. And you're saying, Simon, why do you have them? Because I like to be as weird as possible. You're also now officially part of the BLC, which is the big little club. Because again, when it comes to fitness, when it comes to the gym, when it comes to the fitness palace of love, doesn't matter if you're big, doesn't matter if you're small, we're all aiming for the same goal, whatever that may be. Now, last week we were talking about the gym and I mentioned how maybe, just maybe, you don't need to change your front delts as much as you are doing at the moment because you get them with other exercises. And this led to a conversation, cheap plug, at Simon316 on Instagram, where some people said, me a message saying well are there any other exercises that you would deem to be a waste of my time and i was like well that's a video idea so here is seven eight nine whatever the hell it is exercises that may just be a waste of your time number seven the front raise and yes we go back to what we talked about last week because i enjoy there to be a segue between the two a card will pop up on the screen and you can click it and of course if you are training front raises you are specifically aiming for your front delt now let's make something very clear here when i say a waste of your time i mean it literally so when you go to the gym with your busy life that you already have, you may have one, potentially two hours to get everything you need to do into that window. So if there are some exercises you can just ignore entirely because you can get that kind of stimulation elsewhere, then to me, that is a waste of your time and you need to be using your time better. Now, does this mean I don't think you should do front raises ever? No. If you're training for a specific competition and aren't just going for a health and fitness lifestyle, could all this advice change? Absolutely. But on a general level, if you can only get a certain amount of time in to train shoulders, you don't need to be worrying about doing front raises because you're mostly going to be hitting them when you do indeed do your bench press. Now, the reason I think front raises also, or front delts, whatever you want to say, get a bad time is because no one's training their rear delts. So what's happened now is we've had this wave of people that are saying, look, it's not about front delts, it's not about front delts, it's not about front delts. And the way that I'm going to try and reel you into the other side is say, scrap front delts and train your real delts and stealths. And train your real delts and stealths not train their rear delts now do you have to no but if you are looking away to get sort of more 360 shoulders or just have more cap shoulders whatever the word you want to use you have to be training rear delts so the best way to use your time again is to jump front raises and do that if you do do front raises because you like them or because you enjoy them or you feel like you need to do them i always advise keeping them light and we're going to talk about this later too because when you've got a dumbbell and you're up here gravity is going to be kicking your ass and this shoulder joint is so well wibbly wobbly that it could absolutely break you so yes just make sure you're being careful with it you don't need to throw around 50 kilograms even if the rock is doing it keep it light and number six is the tricep kickback now i hate tricep kickbacks i've always hated them and i never could understand why because you see them all the time if you don't know i'll make sure there's something on the screen but a tricep kickback is literally when you hold a weight like that and you do this with your arm. Now, the reason I think they are, once again, a waste of your time is because I'd say, what, 50, 60, maybe even 70% of the exercise of the range of motion, you're not using your tricep at all. Like, again, I'd love to show you this in the gym, but I still got my broken hand. But just, you know, do it with me here. If you start off here, you go nothing, you go nothing, you go nothing. You get to the end. Oh, there it is. I can feel that horse show flexing. And when you come back, it's a little better. But by the time you've got to about here, you're not using your triceps anymore. Maybe you're using your shoulders, maybe you're using other parts of your arm, maybe your forearm has kicked into gear. So why on earth, if you're training triceps, would you want to use an exercise like that when you could do skull crushes, you could do an incline bench, you could do, well, there's a thousand things you could do, not a thousand, but there's a dozen things that you could do that are far better better than this now once more if you want to do it please feel free who the hell am i some bald guy yelling at you but maybe just change your range of motions a bit maybe actually just do partial reps with it because that is going to focus on your triceps more but i would prefer personally just to do skull crushes over and over and over again and you shouldn't do that you should be more varied but if i had the choice of mixing it up between kickbacks and skull crushes or just doing skull crushes for my entire session I definitely picked the ladder. Number five is the adductor and abductor machines. Now, once again, of course, these are good. They're isolation machines, and they are going to focus on your abductors and adductors. I can never say that word, so I probably got it wrong just there too. But this goes back to your time management thing. If you're only training legs once a week, there are better exercises you can do where these muscle groups are still going to kick into gear. For example, squats. So rather than sort of don't do squats or don't do variations of squats and you want to go and use these isolations instead, I don't think that's a good idea. I think you'd be met much better off maybe 
doing a bunch of squats and then maybe doing a bunch of lighter squats and then maybe doing some goblet squats and then maybe doing some zercher squats and then maybe doing Bulgarian split squats. There are so many other things you can do that not only are you training your abductor and your adductor, but you'll be training your quads, you'll be training your hamstrings, you'll be training your calves. Once again, just to reiterate what I said, if you are trying to slice up your body like a crazy person for a competition, this changes massively. But I think sometimes what people do is they'll do their squats because they know it's their big compound movement and then they'll just go to every single gym machine there is because they think, well, that trains legs. So they do leg extension, they do hamstring curl, then they get to the abductor and adductor machine and they're like, well, I'll do some of those as well. But you don't need to. Go and pick a bigger exercise, especially when it comes to your legs. Like, Let's say you've got 90 minutes to train legs. Everything I've just said is probably going to take you 90 minutes and you haven't done lunges. And I promise you, doing walking lunges or static lunges or barbell lunges, whatever the hell lunge you want to do, is going to give you better leg development than sitting on a machine and, and doing this. Like, I even know what that is. It looks like I'm, I'm trying to clap, but someone's told me if I make any noise, they'll shoot me in the head. So I don't particularly think you get much from it. I also think a lot of people go so heavy with it, they're just prone for injury because nobody warms up their legs properly and you should absolutely do that too. I just ain't a fan. Number four is sit-ups. And the reason I throw sit-ups in there is because I was talking to somebody the other day and they say they always save 20 minutes at the end of their workout, 10 to 15, 20 minutes, to do a bunch of sit-ups because they want abs. And I face palm straight away. I was like, dude, what are you doing? You'd be far better off not doing any sit-ups, ensuring that you are, I think he was doing a push-pull legs routine. I think it was push day he said he did it. I think he said he did it on every single one, but he was struggling to get other exercises in. So I was like, screw abs. Well, no, not screw abs, but screw sit-ups. Get your workout done. On your rest day, you can do a bunch of sit-ups if you want. Your core is going to be able to take it. But don't sacrifice exercises in other areas because you're doing sit-ups to get abs. Because as we have said time and time again, that's not how it works. You could do 700 sit-ups every single day. But if your diet is not on point and you're eating in a calorie deficit and you've got a bunch of blubber around there, it's not going to make a difference. It's absolutely going to help your core. And maybe when your abs do come through, they're going to look a little bit better than they would have done otherwise. But keep it nice and simple. News headline style. Do not use setups to get abs. It's not how it works at all. You've got a layer of fat <laughs> over the top of them, and you've got to get rid of that first. And number three is dumbbell rotator cuff exercises. Now, the reason I've thrown this one in is here because I used to make the similar mistake. I had terrible rotator cuffs, and just by doing some, you know, crappy research on the internet, I saw people doing this, and I saw people doing this, and whatever else, and I thought, okay, well, I'll do that with a very light two-point kilogram weight plate, or I'll do it with a dumbbell. But the issue with that is, let's do this one, right? That is a good, that is a rehab exercise for people that are trying to get back from shoulder injuries. But if you are doing it with a dumbbell, or a weight gravity does this and it pushes down so even if you are using a light weight while you're trying to get all the way out and all the way in in order to warm up your rotator cuff you're not because even if you don't notice it you're being pushed down and who the hell knows what's going to go in here maybe your lat kicks in your chest your arm and you're not warming it up in the proper way so the best way to do it is to do it with a cable machine because if you do it on the cable machine the cable is taking care of gravity and you can just focus on working the muscle and working the rotator cuff etc etc now never go crazy heavy on these it's not important and if you actually want if you enjoy fighting gravity i think they're called wide WTs. That's when you lay on the floor or you lay on the bench and you act like Superman for a while. So you put your arms out in front of you for however long you want. I usually do 30 seconds and then you arms out like that for 30 seconds and then you do arms like that for 30 seconds. I'll make sure there's a picture on the screen. This is the best warm up for shoulders and warm down that I have ever done. And ever since I incorporated them, not only do I feel like my shoulders are a teeny bit stronger, but they feel more solid. They feel less risky and like they're about to blow up <laughs> and ruin my life. So that is the way to do it. Never overload your shoulders with that kind of a stuff and never do it. But if you can't get on the cables, just come up with another way to do it. It'd actually be better just to do it with your arm than bring in a weight there because you'll be going, oh, well, I won't get injured. And sure, not now, but then you'll get to 52 and it'll be part of your routine. You'll blow out your supraspinatus tendon and then you'll be devastated. You go, man, that bored a-hole, he was right. And number two is Smith machine squats. I just don't like them. I don't see the point of them. I think they put too much pressure on your lower back. I don't think they allow you to put your feet in a natural position. So I always think you're putting your body under undue stress, especially when you can just go do normal squats. And even if the squat rack is being used, again, we went through all the variations earlier. You can just do a goblet squat. You can do a dumbbell squat. You can just squat with your body weight. And I know some people are going to disagree with this. But I'm certainly not saying that it's a yes or no situation. But any time, again, that's the only thing that's been free. So I thought I'll do some squats on it. And I try and go relatively heavy. It does not feel right. And I guess... I just feel like I'm putting myself in a position I don't want to be in. So I don't like them. I don't think they're any good. I'm not saying the Smith machine doesn't have its uses. Of course it does. And again, of course, if you're lifting light or you're brand new to the gym and you're a bit scared of doing squats because a free squat, you're like, oh my gosh, there's nothing to protect me. Sure, 
Start on the Smith & Screen, Scott, to get your form right, to get your confidence up. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you get to a point where you're really pushing it, that's when I think you need to migrate across. Now, of course, the Smith machine is going to take a lot of that load. So if you're doing a 40 kilogram squat on the Smith machine, don't then go to a 40 kilogram squat on a free squat. Start with the bar. There's nothing wrong with that. People think, oh my gosh, people are going to laugh at me. Let them laugh. If their lives are that sad that all they've got to do is laugh at a new person squatting the bar, then they're a loser. I promise you, they're a nerd, they're a kick, they're a point, Dexter. They don't deserve your time. So it's just something I've seen too much. And also what people do seem to do is they put it on and they stick their feet out. You would never do that on a normal squat because you can't. But of course you can on a Smith & squat because it takes the load. And then they come down. I think the lower back has got to be screaming. Ah, what are you doing? What are you doing? So yes, I am not a advocate of these. And I would always throw them in the bin. Especially, again, if you're only training legs once a week, go do real squats. And then number one is bench dips. Now, everyone loves bench dips. You take your hands, you go to a bench, you put them on the side, and you start dipping away. And there's nothing wrong with these. There's not. They will work your triceps, and they will incorporate your chest a little bit if you get your feet right. But once again, they also put terrific pressure on your shoulders. Now, if this was the only the way that we could do dips, I'd be like, well, we got to do it. There's no way to do it. Just protect yourselves and just be smart. But you don't. Every single gym I've ever been to has a dipping machine or has uh, parallel bars. Go and do your dips on that. I think people like to do the bench dips because they sit on one bench and they put their feet on another bench and they just put a bunch of plates on their stomach. Doesn't that sound kind of dangerous? And I'm sure you can do it and I'm sure you're great at it. And I'm sure everyone looks at you like, wow, God, it's so great, it's so wonderful. I want to give him a kiss. But I just don't think it's worth it. Again, I don't. Not when the parallel bars are over there doing nothing. They're never in use, ever. The <laughs> The tricep dip station is never in use. It's always free. And even if there are, there are other ways that you can do it. You can do it on a couple of chairs, for example, as I did a lot during lockdown. Now, some people are going to do this anyway. So just be aware of that. Like you really do put your shoulders in an uncomfortable position and just give it a go. Maybe do them for a month or so and then do the parallel dips for a month or so and see which one works better. I'm going to put my money on the ladder. So boom, there you go. Seven exercises that I think are a complete waste of time, but that doesn't mean they're 100% a waste of time because you know your body and you know what you're able to take. Ultimately, as long as you're kicking ass in the gym and you're working hard and you're being intense and you're protecting yourself, you can do whatever the hell you want. If you walk out bigger, stronger, happier, and not with an arm falling off your socket, then you've done well. That's essentially all the gym is. Now, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the bell, ding, dings. When other videos are going live, there will be a video on the screen. Please do give it a click and spam the comment section, write whatever you want. Grillamind.com forward slash Simon to get 10% off all Grillamind supplements. I use them. I think they're good. In Greg Doucette's Power 13 Cookbook, if you want a bunch of good recipes to help with your diet, all of this is in the description below with links. Come give me a follow on Instagram and Twitter at Simon316, Patreon.com forward slash Simon316. Gym fails are temporarily there as I try and sort out the channel. It's still a little bit of a mess. Simon at the big cartel.com and cameos will be back live on on the 5th, I believe. What's the date? Today, the 3rd. So the 4th of the 5th, if you're watching this on day one, thank you to everybody who always asks for a cameo, but ultimately, you stay safe in the gym. Please